Welcome everybody to this this week's episode of Heel Heat, the, the WWE show. My name is George Coles. This is my tag team partner, B. Brian Blair. Gary Rhodes, and thanks Reverend Slick. You're welcome. I'm a Jaff's old bro. Jaff's old bro. Now going right into it, the, uh, the big, the 1001 episode of Raw, just three episodes away till Raw has as many episodes as Chris Jericho has moves. Armbar. Armbar. Rear Naked Gardenza. Exactly. The first thing of the night we're going to talk about is uh, the beginning segment, CM Punk, coming out, giving his explanation of what he did to The Rock. I think, personally, it made a lot of sense to me. He, I don't actually see it as a heel turn. No. Um, he's still getting cheers. It, it made sense. And him sitting there explaining to Jerry Lawler, you're shaping these guys' opinions by your opinion, not the universe's opinion. I didn't attack the WWE universe, I, I attacked, attacked Dwayne. Rock. Dwayne. I like how he called him Dwayne too. It's really sticking it to him. And and that's what you know, that's been missing from Punk for a little while, the smarminess. Oh yeah, that's something that the business needs. And it's not like a heel turn, I think it's more like an Austin run. You know, where he just don't give a shit. Right. And that's awesome. And you know, you got then you got the whole things going through the, the backstage segment with him and Cena which I thought was awesome. Oh, it, was, yeah. <laughs> it was epic, and it was just, a real low blow. Just, you know, being a smart-ass to Cena the whole time, which CM Punk's character should be a smart-ass to John Cena. Exactly. They Face or heel or otherwise, they shouldn't get along. Mm-hmm. He's, you know, if you go by the character they built out, CM Punk is the anti-Cena, and that's the character they built. They shouldn't be friends. They no. shouldn't, I mean, they should maybe respect each other, but not necessarily be friends. And I think that Punk's playing it perfect right now. You know, I think he's going along the lines of, like I said, he's kind of like the Austin face heel, where he just don't really give a shit. He could, all right, right now, Punk could give the GTS to Jerry Lawler, and they'll still boo him, or still cheer him tomorrow. You know what I'm saying? He could, you know, if he would have gave it to Cena that night, last week, what he would have cheered. And that all leads into the main event, uh, the number one contender match, which you have um, Cena, of course. And fucking Big Show ended up being a whole dusty finish, um, making they called it, it making it a three-way match for SummerSlam. Um, it is what it is. Well, the, the the three-way match is just a clean way that Punk can get away with the title, I think, because if it was a one-on-one, he's gonna have to go do something cheap to beat Cena and all this good stuff. Because you know, Cena can't lose. I mean, he kicked out of the choke slam. You know, I mean, really. Super Cena. Exactly, it's Hawk Cena. Hawk Cena. Hawking up, brother. What's he gonna do? Why did you do the the Ultimate Warrior shit when you were talking about the Hulk? No, I'm hawking up. I'm hawking up. I'm not grabbing ropes. I'm not grabbing ropes like You're this. You're not wagging the finger, though, you think? I was getting to that point until you interrupted me. Okay. God. Jesus. Talk, sucker. But back, back into that, and then, you know, they got the, the whole thing. He started off the night ripping into the Jer- Jerry Lawler, awesome. and then he came, came back on the commentary and was tearing into him again. You know, basically... Not so many ways pointing out that Jerry Lawler's act is at this point dated. Question of the week. Is Jerry Lawler dated? Is well, Jerry Lawler past his prime? Well, and who could replace Jerry Lawler? It's a two-part two part question. Is is Jerry Lawler's time in WWE, has it passed its, you know, has he run his course? And if you say yes, who would you replace him? And then, you know, we'll get to our ideas on that next week's show. We want to hear your opinion. Go on our Facebook. Go on our Twitter page. Send us a message. Write in, write in the comments down, right down there on YouTube, right below where this video is going. Um, you know, send us what you think, which, you know, leads us into the question of last week, which was um, who, is gonna, who do you think will go over in the Triple H Brock Lesnar match, which is going to end up being the, the main event of of SummerSlam, which again, Punk gets fucked out in the main event. Even at least it wasn't by Cena this time. Yeah, I mean, it's, honestly, if it's not by Cena. It's by Triple H. Yeah, but you know, it, it is Triple H. It, it's that's a different animal. You it's know, different. Triple H deserve. I mean, if Triple H wants to main event every damn pay per view, he deserves it. I mean, sorry to say, Triple H is bigger than the WWE Championship because he's held yeah. it so many times. I mean, he's the one that you know kept the company afloat when everybody left. To do movies or had a bad neck. Well, what do you think about? Uh, well, first of all, the the responses we got um, 
I know Paul and Lou, both of our two of our friends from the Deadly Sin show, um, they both responded and um, they both pretty much had the same answer that um, if Triple H, if a stipulation's added where the lawsuits dropped, that Triple H will win. If there's no stipulation, they believe that Brock Lesnar wins. I tend to agree with them. I don't see no point in having Lesnar lose two high-profile matches in a row. You're killing his character if he keeps losing. Then the monster becomes just another guy. Exactly. And you still got him until WrestleMania of next year. You don't want to kill him. Triple H can stand to lose. I mean, yeah. it's not. it wouldn't kill his career no. if he lost. No. Although, for his ego, he might not want to lose. Yeah, but I, he's more about business. Now, we'll jump ahead. Let's say that, you know, The Rock... You know, wins the WWE Championship and defends the title okay. against Lesnar at WrestleMania next year. I think Rock's ego would want him to get over since that's the one guy he never beat. It's a good point. I, I and I could see it. You know, Vince. We'll fast forward. Vince could. I see Vince doing that too because Rock. You know, Rock did more for the business than Brock did, mm -hmm. basically. And you know, Brock is definitely leaving. Where well, Rock, you know, will come back here and there, even if it's just to promote a movie. Rock, rock promoting a movie is still a bigger needle jump than anyone else showing up. Exactly. Other than Austin. Austin yeah. can jump the needle, too. Yeah, and, uh, and it's I'm all about waiting for that to happen again. I mean, I, I miss seeing Austin in the ring. Mm -hmm. Not wrestling, but just seeing him there personally. You know, I like, I like his character. Yeah, he's, he's, he was missed on He was the thing that I missed on the thousandth episode of Raw, even though we understand why he missed it. You know, he had the knee surgery and all that, which hope he gets well. Hope he could come back. For the 20th anniversary of Raw, which should be January. Right? January 12th would be, well, the date, you, the week of the 12th. You know they're going to make a big fucking show out of oh, it. Oh, they know, fucking another, should. It's, it's a landmark. Like, yeah, it's 20 years. They'll make another show like the 15th, the 10th, the 1,000th episode, the 500th. You know, they'll do it big, which which is great. We like that. Um, then, you know, we're going to go into the thing. This is the second week in a row they've done the three-hour Raw. Uh, the first was a special episode, the 20, or the, how I'm saying the fucking 20th. Thousandth episode. Thousandth episode were all, so it made sense to be three hours for that show to fit in all the crap that they fit in. This week, the I would say 45 minutes out of the extra hour was taken up by recaps of shit that happened on this show, shit that happened on last week's show, and shit that happened on SmackDown. And also What's the that? tout bullshit. Tout bullshit and yes. There was there was so much social media bar barrage in there. Tout Twitter, um, the fucking Just get to wrestling. You know, I mean, that's what you're, you're watching wrestling. I mean, sports entertainment, wrestling, whatever you want to call it. And, and you know, if you did one thing a night, if they did, you know, they did the, the gimmick, which was retarded. All three fucking choices were the same match. Oh, falls count anywhere. No disqualification, and what was it? Street fight. Street fight. It's won. the same fucking match, no matter what you pick, except or if you pick Falls Count Anywhere, they could pin him anywhere in the building. That's the only goddamn difference. Yeah. It was retarded. It was a retarded choice. But if they did just that, and that was their tout thing of the week, they did one thing where you could tout, mm -hmm. and they used that, that would be great. You, got, you pushed over your social media thing. I'm just tired. But of it. you didn't ram it down our throats. By like 9.30, 9.45 last night, I was tired. I was struggling to watch the show. I can, tell you, I can tell you, you know, it had an exciting end, exciting ending, mm -hmm. and I still went to sleep within five minutes of Raw being oh. off the air. And it usually, when the ending, ha when something big happens at the end, I can't fall asleep because I'm excited. Mm -hmm. I'm a fan, you know. I want to see what's happening next week. I'm excited. Yeah, and it, it, it gets your juices going. Whereas this, it's like, okay, uh, that was good. Bedtime. But, you know, it's, they're, hopefully they'll work out their kinks, you know, and, and they'll, hopefully the three-hour rolls aren't so labored from here on. I, I, I said it was just like they just kept force and shit on us. I don't care about touting. I'm a fan. I'm not a, a, a teenager. I don't want to sit there. No, no, I'll be a teenager. I'm not trying to say anything bad about it. But it's just not my thing. I just want to watch wrestling. I really don't care what Susie from Iowa thinks of Did it CM Punk. Did it all seem like, and, and no disparaging people, but did they, didn't it all sound like a bunch of rednecks that were touting? Uh, as far as a redneck as I am, yes, it did sound like a whole bunch of rednecks. Bunch of no. and not not the bionic redneck. Either. What? Anyways, and, and then you know you got that bullshit dragging the show down. And then you got then you got the the controversy of the week. Um, Abraham Washington, A.W. 
throwing out a Kobe Bryant rape joke, which happened seven fucking years ago. Was it at least seven? I don't know. It's seven or eight years ago. Uh, it, it was it was a stupid joke. And throwing his shoe and saying your mama, too. We forgot about that part. The, well, the controversy is a rape joke. Oh, it is. But I'm just saying, it's yeah. just like the, the, the kid needs to learn by being around another manager. I mean, he's a great talker, not taking it away from him. The Burger King headset, like you said, I think it's starting to work for him. But I, I think they honestly need to get him to follow around with a real old school manager and let him learn the, 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 the trade of being a manager. From it's someone. a skill, you know? It, it is, and you know, it's... A good manager could bring as much to a match as a good worker can. Bobby Heenan. Bobby Heenan can make a shitty guy well, look great. I mean, you got your list of them. You got Bobby Heenan was a great manager. Um, Jimmy Hart, for what he did, was great. You got others, J.J. Dillon. You know, the... The list goes on in Gary Hart. It goes on and on. Gary Hart, you know, great manager, managed Gino. He could, he could, I could still never have a picture of Gino in my house. That's an inside joke. Yeah, good, good inside joke. And, you know, <laughs> it was it was a stupid fucking joke to get yourself in trouble over a joke that's dated and just dumb. And that probably is going to cost a prime because I heard they're going to they're going to talk about putting the prime time players as being the tag team champions, which uh, 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 would suck anyways. But I know that's a good one. I had to put that's his little gimmick out. Fucking did it. <laughs> he sounds like a, an injured seal. I, I honestly think that they 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 suck. They they they're chocolate not. Cena sucks too. I don't care. He, I mean, they're a terrible tag team. I would, you got so many other choices to put the belts on that you're just really it's killing me with these 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 these, two. these jobbers. Basically, that's all they are. They the one was a jobber from Nexus. And the other one was from NXT. They're both from, well, they're both NXT. Yeah, NXT. but the one was the, you know, yeah. fake Cena was Nexus. Then, you know, you got the big return of the night, the Heath Slater gimmick going on and, and Randy Orton coming out. I'm, I'm, I'm digging the Heath Slater thing. I think, I mean, he's kind of like a, a jobber, well, still a, a, a jobber uh, Santino. You know, he's, you know, he's going to call someone out and lose to him. Yeah, it's and it's it's starting to work. He's starting. He's going from a guy that you could give two shits about to someone that you're like, it's interesting. Exactly. You know, when I see him out there in the middle of the ring, I was like, well, who's gonna come out this week and fuck him yeah, up? Who's gonna be the guy that does the uh, does the uh, you know? Honestly, the, the whole thing they've done before, I would have let him job the doink too, just for the fact that way he could they they could say he lost to everybody. Well, it makes sense for him to beat somebody. Somebody, yeah, but and it's gonna it's gonna eventually happen. It's gonna that's you can see the gimmick coming where he there's gonna be someone that comes out and he beats and then he goes on a winning streak. But you know, Randy coming back, it is what it is. It's still kind of lukewarm to me. I don't know. He's he's well, he's one positive piss test away from being fired. Negative. What positive? Yeah. I'm yeah, he's a, I mean, he's got the best body this side of a positive piss test. I mean, do you think they're going to put the gold on him again? It's hard to say because they put the gold on, on Hardy when Hardy had two strikes. So, And and Cena, or I mean Cena, Vince seems to like or Randy Orton way better than he ever liked Jeff Hardy. Well, he should. I mean, honestly, Orton is a better performer than Hardy. I'm sorry if you're a Hardy fan. I just was never really into the Hardy brothers. But when it came to... The three tag teams, Dudley's for this man, Edge and Christian for this man. Hardys were just there to get thrown around. They were spot monkeys. Exactly. Well, let's jump off this 30-foot ladder. I mean, they're not bad. They're, they're, not, they're not bad wrestlers. We understand. If you're a fan of theirs, we know why you're a fan. We liked some of the shit they did. It just wasn't our cup of tea, necessarily. No. You know, I like talkers, so I like the Dudleys. You know, I like and people I, that I talk. like smart asses. Yeah. And I like Edge and Christian. They're the... The best smart asses in the business at that point, I think. And yeah, yeah, and, you know. So I mean, it, it makes sense. I think Orton could get another run now. Do I think he's going to have a long run? They're going to give him runs where they can easily pull the title off of him. They're going to put him uh, in a situation where he's going to have somebody that could take the belt off of him at any time. Yeah, he's going to, you know, maybe they'll keep the thing with Ziggler. Or... That would be good. Or lose at a house show in eight seconds to Kevin Nash. You never know. That's the last time that the belt changed hands not on TV. And that, you know what? It was you know that's probably one of the most popular title changes next to Hogan and you know Hogan and sorry Hogan, Hogan and the Sheik and stuff like that. That you know wasn't on a major television. Well, Hogan and Sheik was on a. Oh yeah, but I'm saying 
But they were still kind of a local company at yeah. that time. They were starting to bust out big time. And then, you know, you got the Daniel Bryan stuff all night. Daniel oh, and AJ. Priceless right there. Priceless. Spot, spot on. For a guy that was said that he he's not a talker, he's never going to get over talking, he's one of the best fucking talkers they got. And he's pulling... He, he pulled his gimmick off great. The only, only slight disappointment was they could have easily... Brought in Dean Ambrose as the psychiatrist. Exactly. I don't know what they're waiting for with Ambrose because you know I've seen some of his Florida Championship wrestling stuff, and I'm impressed with the guy. And even back to when he was John Moxley working in India, in the Indies, and in, uh, I think Evolve and and Dragon Gate and um, Combat Zone Wrestling, he did he did awesome shit. And he has a very Heath Ledger Joker kind of mm-hmm. gimmick to him, and, and in um, FCW he even had a gimmick of being. Uh, a psychiatrist, which is why I thought it was going to happen there. He's been rumored to be called up for months. He's actually even on the programs if you go to yeah. the live shows. He's on the programs, and he was working dark matches until like a month or so ago. Right. You know, bring him out. Bring him out. That's That would have been perfect to him. Then you got the whole thing, um, the do- whole tie-in with Kane, which didn't make sense at all. Exactly. But I did read today, the rumor is that it's gonna, Kane's going to be the guy that wrestles with Charlie Sheen in his corner. At SummerSlam, it's going to be Charlie Sheen managing Kane versus Daniel Bryan. So not being on cocaine, he's going to be out there with Kane. He's probably going to be on cocaine with Kane. Awesome. You yeah. heard it here first. Which, <laughs> and, and that's going to that goes right into um you know not not to short changes but going right into our our heel of the week segment you know uh, last week our heel of the week was CM Punk for turning this week. We want to give it to a young kid that's just coming up, just building. His, I think, the heel of the week is is Damian Sandow. He I had agree. the he had the thing with DX last week. He had a strong. He's showing. a martyr. <laughs> he is a martyr. He had a strong <laughs> showing on a SmackDown. Mm-hmm. Then he came out, and this is what I this is what I absolutely love for the first well second time, but this time I actually think it's going to be a gimmick. Because Big Show destroyed Brodus and they didn't make nothing of it. Mm-hmm. But he mauled Brodus, which hopefully Brodus gets his first actual feud. He's yeah. not going to wrestle jobbers. He's going to. Hopefully it's a match at SummerSlam, Sandow versus Brodus. I mean, they're not top of the card guys, but you need guys on the bottom of the card exactly. too. Even if it's the, the YouTube match of the night, you know? Yeah, and, and to think about it, what was it? Um, SummerSlam 90. I want to say 97. Mm hmm. Where you had um, Rock vs. Triple H, where we're real early in the card, and you could see it's two guys that are going up the card. Oh, well, SummerSlam 96, when the dark match was Austin versus Yokozuna. Yeah. And look, look what happened to Austin the next year, mm-hmm. and the year after that, you know. I, I see good things for Damian Sandow. I really do. I think he's I like a, his gimmick. He's a kid that, that wrestled around on the independents. He was up there at one point as Idol Stevens, didn't really do much, honed his craft. Got better and better, and came back. I I like him. He's got a good gimmick. He's got a good look to him. He kind of looks like a cross between Edge and Bruiser Brody, and the genius. Uh, the whole cartwheel thing, too. You know? the, yeah, the, well, it's all it all Puff. comes into the gimmick. Exactly. You know, it, I, I think it borrows from Lanny Poffo, Dean Douglas. It borrows from all that shit. Here's here's what I'm thinking right now, and uh, I think right now we're going into another. 2002 thing. It's been about 10 years since 2002, and 2002 we, we had the emergence of Orton, Cena, Lesnar. I think right now this could be the year for Sandow and uh, Brodus. Brodus. Um, what was the kid's name? Dean Ambrose. Dean Ambrose coming up. Bryant uh, getting stronger. And Antonio Punk getting Cesaro. Big, Cesaro and, and Punk getting you know even Chris bigger. Hero eventually. Chris Hero coming. hopefully soon, you know. Well, Chris Hero is amazing, and I, I don't understand why he's not there yet. And, you know, it, that's just another thing. That's Vince's choice when he wants to bring him up. Um, but, you know, Sandow, you, gotta, you are our heel, heel of the week for WWE, doing awesome things. Um, I wanted to talk about, we're going to add another another show. We want to get as much content out there as we, we can. We have some good followers, you guys, that are following us. You're putting our, our hits are going up and up. Um, we like it. We got more followers on Facebook. People liking us on Facebook. More on Twitter. We 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 enjoy it. We were wanting to give you. We since you guys seem to enjoy us, 
we're going to add something every week. Basically, a throwaway five, ten minute show. It's a DVD review or other review. And um, for our first one, normally we're going to do whatever is newest, what's just coming out. For our first one, we're going to let you guys pick what we review. Um, we have two DVDs that are from the vaults, and basically, you could pick my pick or you could pick Gary's pick. My choice that we're going to do, and we're going to watch it back this week if you pick it, is the rise and fall of ECW, the retrospective on the whole run of ECW, WWE's retrospective, and your choice would be the rise and fall of WCW. You got two of the companies that brought the business up in the 90s that helped it be what it is today and even bigger than what it is today. <laughs> but you got the rise and fall of ECW or the rise and fall of WCW. Tell us what you think, which one you'd like to see us review, and then we're going to do a little short show, a five, maybe a five, ten minute review show. Um, but basically that's what we have for this week. Like us on Facebook, follow us on Twitter, make sure to subscribe to this channel. I've been I'm George Coles. I'm Gary Rhodes. And this has been Heel Heat.